Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to do lesson four, glory, war, and decline. I'm starting on page 85. So um, our guiding question is how do governments change? Direct democracy is a form of democracy in which all citizens can participate firsthand in the decision-making process. A representative democracy is a form of democracy in which citizens elect officials to govern on their behalf. A philosopher is someone who searches for wisdom or enlightenment. So we have a map here, and according to the key, we have Sparta and their allies, the Athenians and their allies, neutral st states, and then the little pal marks, the pal, excuse me, the little pal marks are victories. The dark ones are Spartan, and the light ones are Athenian. And just looking at this map, which one do you see more of, dark or light? I see more dark, um, especially on the left-hand side. I have one, two, three, four dark pals or Spartan victories. On the right-hand side, I see two dark and three Athenian. So, so we've been talking about Sparta and Athens, and we know that Sparta was a city-state based on military, and the whole government and lifestyle was all centered around military life, where the Athenians and Athens were more focused on literature and art and um, citizens ruling and very educational people, educated people. And here we're going to look at these two city-states going to war. And we are going to look at them um, and see how how, the, how, the, how all that worked out. Um, we did see the Athenians and the Spartans come together against Persia in lesson three. But this is after Persia, so they now need to fight with each other. All right, so let's get started. On page 86, the rule of Persiles. Per Percules? 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 When the Persian Wars ended, Athens became a powerful city-state. From 461 BC to 429 BC, Athens enjoyed a golden age as the economic and cultural center of Greece. The government of Athens, excuse me, the government of Athens was a direct democracy. That means that all citizens of Athens met to debate and vote on government matters. So, like, everybody went up to the assembly. Everybody talked about every little rule, every little thing. Everybody was in charge of the government. Um, in the United States, we have a representative democracy. Citizens elect a smaller group of people to represent all citizens. It makes laws and governs on behalf of the citizens. In ancient Athens, direct democracy worked because of the small number of citizens. I mean, if you got 5,000 people, like, that's a little bit easier to manage than 5 million people, right? Um, at the assembly meeting, citizens made policy on war and foreign affairs, passed laws, and elected officials known as generals. Number one, what kind of democracy do we have in the United States? In ancient Athens, direct democracy worked because of the small number of citizens. I just read that. After the Persian Wars, the most important general in Athens were Pers was Persiles. He led the city-state for more than 30 years. He gave people positions in the governments based on their ability, did not care which social class people belonged to, brought ordinary Athenians into government, rebuilt Athens after Persians burned it, Supported artists, writers, teachers, and philosophers. Philosophers reflect or think about the meaning of life. Athens became a great center of knowledge. Athenian life. At its height, about 285,000 people lived in Athens. Not all these people were citizens. Only about 43,000 males had political rights. Women, foreign-born men, and enslaved people could not be citizens. They had no political rights. 
Uh, number two, circle the words that mean all citizens participate in government decision making. That's going to be up there. It's, it's not num It's not the same as number one. It's the other one. Uh, number three was a philosopher. Well, it's in bold right there. Um, and then we're working on number four. How was Athena? Oh yes. How was Athens able to become a direct democracy? Because it didn't have as many people. Like they were able to. It worked because it had. Um, it wasn't like millions of people. So you didn't have like millions of people coming together trying to vote on every little thing. Um. Back on Athenian life, Athenian men worked as farmers, artisans, and merchants. They often worked mornings and exercised in the afternoons. In the evenings, upper-class men discussed politics and philosophy during social dinners. The women of Athens had very different lives. Girls married early, often in their mid-teens. Their duties were to have children and take care of the house. Women in poor families didn't farm work or sold goods at the marketplace. Women in the upper class homes spun, dined, and wove cloth. Upper class women rarely left their homes. When they did, they had to be with a male relative. Moving on to page 87. Athenian citizenship. citizenship. <laughs> Athenian citizenship. On the left hand side, we have citizens, which were free, native born men. On the right hand side, we have non citizens, which were women, foreign born men, enslaved people. Um, Athenian women could not attend school. Many, however, learned to read and to play music. Educated women in Athens were not considered equal to men. Women could not participate in politics or own property. Greek women were also under the care of males. Foreign-born women were not treated the same way as Athenian women, however. Such a woman was Aspasia. She was known for her intelligence and charm. She taught public speaking. Her ideas were popular among Athenians. Persiles was influenced by hers. Her slavery was common in ancient civilizations. Most Athenian household had at least one enslaved person. Many enslaved people were prisoners of battles. They included both Greeks and non-Greeks. Enslaved men worked on farms and in the shops of artisans. Some worked at hard labor. Enslaved women were cooks, cooks and servants in wealthy homes. Sometimes they were teachers to upper class children. The treatment of enslaved people was different from place to place. Slavery helped Athens become develop a thriving economy. Slavery helped Athens develop a thriving economy. So, number five, why was slavery important in Athens? It's going to be what I just read. Number six, how do the roles of Athenian men and women differ? Well, I mean, just go back to page 86 and the um, beginning of 87. Why did the Delian League, why was the Delian League created? So, that's coming up. And then why was the Delian League able to drive out the Persians? All right, war between Athens and Sparta. The Greek city-states learned over time that their survival depended on cooperation. Even after the Persian Wars, Persia remained a threat. In 478 BC, the Greek city-states joined together to form a defensive league. Its purpose was to fend members against the Persians. Sparta did not join this league. It was called the Delian League, so that's number seven. So why was it created? To protect each other against Persians. Um, it was called the Delian League because its headquarters was on the island of Delos. Delos. The League drove out the Persians out of Greek territories in Anatolia. As a result, trade increased and Greece became richer. So why did they want the Persians out? And remember, we talked about Anatolia is part of Turkey, and it's up here in this area where you have the Black Sea and all of the northern trade having to go through the Black Sea and through the Bosphorus Strait and into the Agency and into the Mediterranean. So that area up here is very profitable and very important for trade, and um, it was just important to keep them safe. What? What? 
doing? My other cat's crying. What, Red? Yeah? Well, come here. He's thinking about it. Come on. Don't be scared. Oh, okay. All right. 88. Over time, however, the Delian League failed. Athens began to control the other member city-states. In 433 BC, Athens interfered with some of Sparta's allies. These allies pressure Sparta to attack Athens. The conflict is called the Peloponnesian War because Sparta is located on the Peloponnesus region of Greece, which is over here. Right there, there's Athens, and there's Sparta. I own Sparta. Finally, oh, excuse me. At a funeral ceremony for soldiers and sailors killed in battle, Persley's made a famous speech called the Funeral Oration. In this speech, Persley's gave reasons why democracy is worth fighting for. Um, after about two years, a deadly disease broke out in Athens. After one third of people died, including Persley's. During the next 25 years, each side won some victories. Neither side was able to defeat its opponent. Number nine. Name two things that helped cause the Peloponnesian War. Well, one thing would be the Athenians popping off to the Spartan allies, and then the other thing would probably be Persiles dying, because if he hadn't died, then maybe they could have kept peace longer or maybe, you know, delayed the fighting some. All right, um... Finally, Sparta made a deal with the Persians. The Spartans agreed to give Persia some territory in Anatolia. <gasps> They're going with the enemy. Ah. Finally, Sparta made a deal with the Persians. The Par Spartans agreed to give Persia some territory in Anatolia. In return, Persia gave Sparta money to build a navy. In 405 BC, Sparta's new navy destroyed the Athenian fleet. Athens surrendered a year later. The Peloponnesian War brought disaster to Greek city-states. Governments were left weak and divided. Many people had died in battle and from disease. After the war ended, Sparta ruled its new empire much like the Athens, much like Athens had ruled. Sparta's allied city-states grew angry at the harsh treatment. While the city-states fought each other, a new kingdom grew in the north. This kingdom was Macedonia. So if you're looking at this map on the screen, we're down here in the Peloponnesus War, and they had some fighting here because, remember, um, Persia is over here, and this is where some of the fighting would happen, probably, I'm assuming, with the Persian help. And, um, yeah, Macedonia is up here, and it's about to come in as the next key player. All right, so number 10, why was Sparta's deal with Persia so important to the war against Athens? Well, I mean, could they have even had a chance if it hadn't been for the Persians' money to build a navy? Oh, my God. Check for understanding. List three things or three changes personally made to life in Athens. Well, that is going to be, um, on page 86. So there's some bullet points on page 86. Just list some of those right there. And that is all for this evening. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Thank you for coming and watching and doing your homework. I'll see you later. Bye.